to, I'm going to keep my, what I have to say brief, because I really want to hear what you all have to say. Uh, I've been on conference calls for the last three months, twice a week. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, and I see Lori, she's been on there with me and David. I see you, David. Uh, and I thank you, Greg. I see you, Greg. But we, we get on the we get on a call with uh, Dr. Alonzo twice a week, the, the federal and the state uh, politicians. I think the cities you and the, uh, you have your own calls. Uh, so uh, what we have heard is that the the local the hot spot for the COVID infection is in Lake Worth, Palm Springs, Green Acres, and Belle Glade. So I wanted to get some of the community leaders together today uh, so we can hey here we have, we're waiting for Dr. Alonzo but really to talk and see what else we need to do to try to help the health department contain this virus in this population what, what, what I'd like to do is this we're going to go around I, I, everybody who was on this call to just identify yourself just say your name and who you if represent or whatever uh, we're going to start I'm, I'll start up there with you. We with, see from my office, we got Tr Trevor. Say hi. Trevor Fleming. We got Felicia Goldstein. Yes, okay, Felicia Goldstein, my chief of staff, is up is there. I know my other, my DC chief of staff is someplace on here, Josh. Got a couple people from my office. Okay, Lori, start with you. Hi, I'm Lori Berman, State Senator, District 31, which, which has all of those cities that have the highest numbers. So I'm happy that you organized this. Thank you. And let's try and figure what we can do to help every, help out and cut the rate of transmissions in these cities. Okay. Okay, Greg, just start, say hi, your name and what you do. You have to, uh, folks, you have to unmute. Let <laughs> me get the video to work. Hi there, uh, County Commissioner Greg Weiss, Palm Beach County, District 2, which also includes Green Acres, Palm Springs, uh, Haver Hill, these, the zip codes that are, that are being very hard hit right now. Okay, and listen, just so everybody knows, you're all going to have an opportunity to uh, put your comments in. Right now, I just want you to introduce yourself. Okay, Reginald? Okay, everybody, you have to unmute oh. for the purposes of the introduction. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Reginald. Everybody call me Reggie. I am with For the Children, and I've been working uh, alongside uh, Mayor Triolo and Liquid, and then Health Chair Liquid as well. Okay, I see an Elvis Griffiths. Are you there? They're not unmuting. You have to unmute. Okay, well, while you figure that out, David. I'm David Silver, State Representative for District 37, which, which includes portions of Lake Worth, West Palm Beach, Lake Worth Beach, uh, West Palm Beach, uh, Green Acres, Palm Springs, and George, and, and a, a vast portion of the area that's been affected. Okay. I see C. Marcelin. Did I say that right? Yes, you have. I'm Carmel Marcelin Chapman, and I am the director for Healthier Liquid Beach, serving the 33460 area. Okay, Rick. Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Pavelsat from Found Care. We're a community health center located in the village of Palm Springs, and I've uh, done a lot of the COVID testing. We were uh, doing, we've been doing drive-up testing since uh, mid-March, and, and we great. really appreciate you're pulling this together because we're seeing the increased numbers among the patients that we're testing. And Rick, you do, you guys do great work. Well, thank uh, you. Dennis. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I can't, uh, my Zoom camera doesn't seem to be working, but as long as you can hear me, I'm a uh, pro bono attorney representing the Guatemalan Mayan Center. Right. Well, your picture looks great. I'm not okay. sure who's got the 803 number. 803, who are you? Well, we don't know. Hello? Okay. Uh, Mayor Shelley Petrolia, go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi there, yes, I'm Mayor Shelley Petrolia, uh, Mayor of Delray Beach, Florida. Um, I am not uh, part of the uh, hotspot areas, but certainly um, we have uh, had certain 
uh, just districts in our area that may uh, be a little bit hotter than others. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening in and uh, definitely a shout out to uh, Found Care who are here in one of our districts doing some testing. So we really appreciate that. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. Thank you. Uh, Frank, you know what I do? I'm going to call on the names I see. And then if, if I don't call on you and you're there in the form of a telephone, we'll give you a chance to chat on in a second. Frank? <laughs> Okay, I'm at the Guatemala Maya Center. Oh, and I'm creating some kind of an echo here. Okay, well, we welcome you anyway. Anyway, we've done, we started wonderful testing with Found Care, right? We continue to test the workers who are mostly indigenous Central Americans, right? We continue to test them every week. We've had a great deal of success by doing the testing at night because these are all essential workers and they're unavailable at the hours when testing is usually conducted. Uh, Thank you, Frank. And we're going to get more into that. Uh, Tricia, Tricia, unmute. I, hi, Representative. Um, I'm here, uh, Representative Rep uh, Joe Casello, District 90. Thank there. you. Very Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Triolo. Hey, it's Mayor Pam Triolo from the city of Lake Worth Beach. We are definitely a hot spot right now, but uh, the good news is we're testing a lot. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to speaking with everyone about it, and I'm so gracious to be here. Beverly Smith. You don't have no title on there, but okay. You can introduce yourself. <laughs> I did not. You know. <laughs> I'm just Pep Smith, uh, mayor of the village of Palm Springs. And thank you again for inviting us to join together. Uh, Palm Springs is one of the hot spots along with Lake Worth and Green Acres. And we are thankful for the mobile unit and all the testing that's being handled. Joel Flores, I see your photo. Hey, Congresswoman Frankel, uh, Mayor Joel Flores here. Uh, I am currently driving, but I am focused on the road, uh, which is always great. But, you know, I know that we are a hotspot, but another thing that we got to look at is we are the, the, the workforce housing of the county. And I bet you our people are the ones out working right now. Um, I bet you their economics are, are not the greatest. And they have to get out there and, and, and earn a living in order to support their family. So I think that's a topic that I, I know I spoke to Felicia, but I look forward to speaking with everyone uh, on this uh, round table. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anybody else who's on a phone who wants to introduce themselves? Who I can't see your photo. Hi, good I know afternoon. I have my city manager, uh, Andrea McHugh, on, on the line. I hopefully she'll introduce herself. Okay. Would you? Would Hi, you good. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. This is Andrea McHugh for the city manager for Green Acres. Thanks so much for having us on the call. Thank, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Hello, this okay. is Todd Wilson, uh, reporter for WPTV, uh, just listening in. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're waiting for Dr. Alonzo. So why we do that, I think, you know, uh, Rick, doc, Dr. Rick, I'm going to call you. you, put, you you're you going by Rick there, Dr. Rick. Found care. Work. Again, thank you for your good work. Can you tell us just from a, uh, from what you know, just from the aspect of a doctor, what's going on what, with the uh, virus in, in that area, in the area? Sure. So first, let me be really clear. It's a PhD doctor. So That's I'm not, all right. a, not a medical Do doctor. Dr. PhD. But it is in health. It's in health <laughs> science. So we're, we're close. Um, okay. What I can tell you from our experience, we've tested 3,055 people um, to date. And what we have seen just recently is again an uptick. So within the past two weeks, um, we're seeing an increase in the number of cases. Um, we have an infectious disease doctor literally five minutes before I jumped on this call. Um, I was on a call with our, within our organization and one of our infectious disease docs who works in the hospitals has said that they are now seeing again a large increase of patients coming into the hospital. So that it's like we've set back to February that that's what they're seeing is um, we're seeing the numbers go up again. So there's a lot of concern out there. It's not just because we're increasing testing that we're seeing more cases. There are, the transmission is happening. And so that's the concern. Yeah, I think that was probably to be expected as we reopen and so forth. 
Absolutely. And we, we, we haven't really even seen if there's going to be impact from the protest because it's a little. No, that will be two to yeah. three weeks yet. Yeah. Two to three weeks. This has nothing to do with the protests. So listen, I know the county and the health department and with a lot of you have been doing a lot uh, in these hot spots. I'm going to, Greg, I want to throw it to you and tell us what you know, the kinds of efforts that you know that that's a co going on in these zip codes where we're, we're seeing this. Uh, and if you could explain, and I'll ask this question generally to anyone to explain why you think these hot spots are the hotspots in these zip codes. It's primarily because of the type of work, I think, that's one of the reasons. Greg, we, uh, I'm sorry, the type of the work that a lot of the patients are uh, doing. Greg, can, would you take it from there? Sure, I mean, and, and I, think, I think Mayor Flores, I think he hit it, he hit it right on the, the nail on the hat, which is we, we, there was, you know, you've got a workforce in there that have, have had to, they have essential jobs, they are not able to stay home, they have to keep going to work. And um, I think we've also got some communication and cultural issues in, in uh, educating people. Um, we are now sending in, and in fact, tomorrow we will have uh, from the health uh, care district, the uh, mobile test van will be going into Green Acres. Uh, and so we are going to, uh, as far as I know, the focus is going to be on these hotspot areas of sending these vans in. I also want to point out to Mayor Petrolia, uh, 33435, I think that's uh, in your city, is also now has turned red, um, huh. over 300 cases. I just saw the numbers um, coming in and to echo uh, what Rick said, uh, ICU utilization now is up over 80% in the county. We have four hospitals that have no ICU beds left um, and it's very concerning. I think it's, it's gonna be a matter of really getting the health department uh, to work with them with the contact tracing and the isolation. We do have money available. If people cannot isolate at home, we have CARES dollars that we can pay to isolate them you know, in a hotel. The issue is going to be culturally whether they can do that. If they've got kids at home, that's going to be very difficult because, you know, they're going to want to take care of their kids. So I think from a policy perspective, one of the challenges for us is going to be to figure out how do we help the family at the same time we're dealing with uh, the uh, positive patient and how we may help them so that they, they can isolate and we don't continue the spread. Boy, I just wanted to, so we're going to welcome, I see uh, somewhere Mayor Grant from Boynton Beach is on. Hello, thanks for joining us. So let me kick it over again to Mayor Flores. Can tell us from your point of view, what's happening in your community? Why, why we have this, these hot spots? What you think we, what more do you think we can do? Well, first of all, I think this is an economic uh, issue for for our community, the the cities that you you mentioned um, are are the workforce housing in the county. So these people are um, out and about. They they're probably your essential workers. They're the ones that had to go back to work because otherwise they couldn't put food on the table. Um, I can even see it on uh, on our food distribution. Uh, we used to have massive lines. Our lines have have decreased. Uh, the food is lasting longer than. Before an hour, 15 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, the food was gone. Um, so I'm seeing it there. I think another thing that we're overlooking, or maybe some people aren't, but um, these are large Hispanic uh, communities that, that have hotspots. So what messaging has gone out to the Hispanic community? I know that a lot of the people that I speak to in my own community, they had to go back to work. They couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't lose another paycheck. Um, so that that's. These are all th it, it, things that I. Uh, I'm seeing from uh, my community. Uh, when I see Palm Springs and Lake Worth, I know they have a large Hispanic community. Um, I don't see much communication happening there. And then another pain point that I shared with Felicia before uh, is that from the county, uh, we're not getting specific areas early on as to uh, where where hotspots. So we we're given information by zip codes, uh, but all of the zip codes that are are red on ours are, are bleed in between the county and, and our city and other cities. So it, it's been, it's so been hard wanna, yeah. because we, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to specific community. 
perhaps I, I would go address it. But if I don't know, I can't address an issue if I don't know where, where, it's, where it's a hotspot. Okay, so I think you raise an issue uh, that I'll have uh, every, anyone who wants to address, uh, which is, you know, what, what can we do to increase communication to the Hispanic community? That's one question. I want us to go, uh, I don't know, Mayor Triola, if you can answer that question or you could just add to this discussion what you're seeing because, you know, Lake Worth is getting hit hard. Yes, uh, very hard. Well, at this point, you know, it, it's been frustrating because at first there was no testing and people in the Guatemalan community were not being tested in good numbers in the Haitian community, the African American communities. And um, we found that we just couldn't get them to go to the county sites at all. And we felt it was imperative that we bring the testing to them in their neighborhoods. We're averaging now between two and four testing sites every single week, thanks to so many different you know, groups that have come in to help us and found uh, to uh, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, Caridad, you know, everyone joining forces to do different ones. The Mayan Guatemalan Center, Father Frank, you are an angel, um, has been reaching out and, and really doing such great communications. But the problem I think that we have to look at is exactly what Mayor Flores said, is that th these people don't want to miss that paycheck. If we can't get them into isolate, you know, and, and quarantine, in a hotel or get that information to them. We need to be proactive about sending them home with things that they can use, medications, uh, thermometers, um, you know, masks, things that they can take that if they are going to, you know, not obey the, you know, a, a suggestion to quarantine because of their testing, um, that they're, they're at least educated in how they can stop the spread. But um, we really need to be very aggressive, though, in trying to get them to quarantine and family members as well. That's the best I think we're going to do at this point. Father Frank, uh, would you add to this discussion, please? Thank you. Uh, thanks, um, Mayor Pam. They, we've been that last thing you mentioned. We've been doing that now for a couple of months. As soon as somebody uh, tests positive, we install. We put an installation in their living place so that they are able to have as nearly as possible an, ace, an area of isolation within, okay? Now, that can be, you know, that can be a trailer with two and a half families in it and with, with one tiny bathroom and one tiny kitchen mm. and the living room is the best bedroom in the house. But we are putting in those kind of installations. And um, I'll put you in touch with these guys because they have, They've really been great about it. Um, in order to do the installation, they have to go into a house where we, which we've already identified as infected. So it's not so easy. The scale of any of this is what is shocking. It's been um, how long ago, Rick, since uh, your team did on the Cinco de Mayo, right? Fifth, fifth right? You guys did 360 tests with us, right? Of whom 75 were positive. And immediately, before we'd even counted the 75, by the time I got to 60, I started going after the county commissioner, the mayor of the county, in whose district this had occurred, right? We are, like, we have been steadily, steadfastly resisting dealing with the reality. Isn't that true? The same thing was I asked for testing at hours when the jardineros, the guys, those workers, will be, will be there. And you can get those men to test if you will not cost them a day's pay to go for the test. But they will not give up a day's pay. They'll go to work sick as a dog, right? And the, because they don't have any choice. There's a money lender waiting for his payment, right? So they don't have any choice about it. They simply have to be at work, sick or not. But they will test if you put it at our, so we asked your guys, Rick, to test at seven in the morning instead of it coming in at nine o'clock, right? We, we have tests every, every Saturday night in Lake Worth because we're able to get a lot of the guys from the construction sites and so on to come on Saturday night. There's, like, 
the, you can adapt to so much of this. If you just of all do something that habitually we never do, which is include this workforce in our reckoning. Um, I, let me ask a question, and this is not to uh, get anybody in trouble at all, obviously, because you, you're saying people have to work. Or is is the problem that in the is it that is that these are undocumented workers who can't get any benefits, or is this both yes. documented and undocumented? Lois, or excuse my Lois. You can call me Lois. That's all right. But yeah. You know, the first thing we start with is a national policy that these people are not to be rescued and that they have to be compelled to go to work because we will offer them no relief of any description with which they can get by. So there's, there's no choice, right, about whether you go to work or not. Right. So and that is, yeah. That, that takes that, us back to your office, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, what's happened is, obviously, I... I you know, this is a philosophical issue between, uh, not, I don't want to make this a political fight here, but I will tell you, Democrats try to get resources for everybody because this disease does not know, uh, you, you know, your race, your religion, your ethnicity, whether you're documented or not. Uh, although under, under current law, definitely testing is for everybody and, t and treatment should be for everybody. But I understand your point. Who wants to add to the discussion? You know what you can do? You can either hit your, your chat or you can hit your reaction button. Reaction, you can go like this, see? You can put your hand up and I'll see you. Area. Lois, Mayor Smith here. Um, okay, Mayor, yes, go ahead, Mayor. I, I wanna agree with uh, Mayor Flores on the, the timing. We've had three testing areas here in Palm Springs. Two of the three, we had people standing in line at four o'clock and the unit had to shut down. So mm -hmm. testing needs to be later in, in the evening because they are working and they're getting off work at five o'clock. So they're not able to get to the testing. I think the, the other issue is, I mean, we, we don't know because 33461 is my zip. Well, it's also, you know, it goes down to Atlantis up, you know, I, I don't know where it is, but if we had literature we could hand out, we could go out and hand it. We've handed out like 2,500 flyers just on the testing. So if we have literature we can hand out to help these people, where can they get resource? You know, uh, at what point do they need to go to the hospital? At what point when their health gets so bad to give them information to deal with? And the other issue is you do have two and three families, you know, generations, you know, 12, 13 people living in a household. Mm -hmm. So isolation, we can get them information on isolating in their home. That is so important. Mm -hmm. All right, who else, would, who would like to add, thank you for, the, who would like to add to this discussion? Can I see your? Can, can I add one more point? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, there, we, now we see you, hello. Yes, I'm finally home. I had to work for a living, so. Um, okay. the, the other aspect is, is we implemented guidelines as to like capacity for, for restaurants and, and, and so on, so on, so on. And who's, who's, who's monitoring this? Who's, who's out there checking? Because I see people uh, out and about uh, dancing and clubbing like, uh, like coronavirus doesn't exist anymore. Uh, obviously social media uh, allows me to see into people's lives, but um, who, who's monitoring and who's, who's going out there and, and shutting these things down? Well, I guess that's a question we, I'm gonna ask uh, Greg Weiss, our county commissioner and the mayors. Is anybody I mean, enforcing? It's it's really it's unfortunately it's it it's gonna ha it has to fall to the sheriff to enforce this. And you know what I've we've as I've been turning uh, some locations in, what I'm hearing back is with the protests that have been going on the last two weeks, they have been stretched very thin. So they haven't been able to follow up on some of these because we've heard about some. Uh, illegal nightclubs opening up and things like that. Um, you know, the restaurants are, is, is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. But I think, I mean, part of it is, is that people are not taking this seriously anymore. They are, um, they think it's over. They think it's one and done. And it's just back to, back to life. And part of it is we're getting the, me they're getting mixed messages. The messages coming out of Washington, the messages for the most part coming out of Tallahassee are not helpful. 
Um, and we have got to, unfortunately, you know, we're getting, as you've said, I mean, from the economics, we're getting squeezed, right? Because the state is not providing the benefits for those that are entitled to them. And there's a section of our population that can't even get them, but they can't even get those benefits. So it's put a real squeeze on, on the county to have to open things back up, probably before we should, um, you know, that we're not hitting these metrics. But we, as a group, we have got to communicate to the, to the population, this is not done. You have to, I mean, people have to figure out a way. We've got to learn to live with this virus, but we've got to stop doing the things we did before that allowed it to, to blow up like it did. And anyways, I, I don't yeah. know, I'll worse. No, I, I know you're expressing the same frustration, frustration I think we're all feeling. I, I, according to Dr. Alonzo on this conference calls, she said that the folks, and I'm gonna, I see you waving, Frank, I'm gonna get to you in a second, because I want you to actually, you can confirm what I'm saying, whether this is correct. We've been told that the, the, that the folks uh, who are, that these hotspots have a lot of workers who are, who are uh, in the, uh, either doing uh, their waiters or waitresses, they're, they're in restaurant work, they're doing uh, lawn work, that kind of thing. So people, we're using them in our economy. Let's make that clear. We're using these people in our economy. Uh, and uh, so uh, we've got to figure out uh, how we, it's like, how do we protect them? How do we keep them safe? Frank, I know you want to talk about that. Go ahead. Well, you have to unmute. Frank, Frank, unmute. Unmute again. Okay, start all over. Okay, I'm the only layman in here, haven't I? Right, all of the, you're all in the, in the social organizing professions. I just want to go to a detailed thing. Sure. We, it takes, I, you, we could not yesterday find a caseworker at the hospital who knew anything about taking a person into quarantine. Mm. Which hospital was that, can you say? It was two hospitals, JFK and Bethesda. And mm. so I'm just bringing this up because collectively you have all the influence in the world, right? We. We supposedly have the funds for this. We're supposed to be able to, and we know that we have a place to take people to, but the connecting part of it is exceedingly difficult and it requires you a good, thanks Laurie for affirming that. It, it's the connecting part of it is extremely difficult from the moment in which the person in the hospital is told, right, that they're being discharged, right? It just gets crazy. You know, that. You know, they're, put, they're put out on the street, right? Well, let, me, let me ask you a question, uh, Father Frank. Do you know how to access the supportive isolation for the folks? Do you? Do you? Okay. Has anyone told you how, to, how they should right. do we're, it? We're talking to Jim Green's office all the time, right? But right. there are too many difficult linkages to be made, and the so one of these population, the workforce that you're talking about, is in the hospital. And then they come and they say, okay, we're discharging you, and, right? Well, the other guys back in the house have already said, no, he ain't coming back here. Okay, well, listen, I think this is something that we can easily uh, fix. But we have Dr. Alonzo has joined us. I think, Dr. Alonzo, you're one of these phones. I'm going to recognize you. Make sure you unmute. I don't know how much of the discussion but you've heard, but why don't you weigh in on what's happening in the... Uh, in these hotspot zip codes, what, what kinds of things that you're doing and how, how the community can help you? We know you're there. Unmute. Uh, you have to unmute. Dr. Let's... Alonzo, it looks like you're unmuted now. Okay, go ahead, doctor. Where are you? What, what number? I don't see her number. Do you, oh, there I see you. Dr. Alonzo, you're definitely there. You can talk. I, I'm talking, but you can't hear me. Now we hear you. Yes, oh, now we good. hear you. 
good, good. I never had a trouble people hearing me. That's unusual. <laughs> okay, so um, I have answers for both the questions that were asked. Um, we have instructed all our contact tracers in our entire epi department that if anybody gets discharged from a hospital or in the street or anything, they can call our epi department. We will assess them and we will then communicate with human services who is the one that making the arrangements for the hospital. So Father Frank, hi, I haven't seen you in a long time, but we will take care of that through our epi department and working with human services, which is Mr. Green that you've been talking to. He's been phenomenal. And during the day, we have our ESF-8 number that is here. They haven't had any trouble during the day, but it's at night that they have problems. So we gave them our epi number and they're to call there, and then we will make the communication with the person that's on call at night. We have their telephone number, so that should not be a problem anymore. Dr. Alonzo, can we, I think that that number sh should be, I think what, the, what Fr Father Frank is suggesting is the hospital should know that. In fact, I think everybody should know, Every we all should know who to, who to call Yes. Uh, when we find if if so that, that'll be one of the to-do lists okay what yeah, what that is that is um james and uh, megan's responsibility and they're going to call each and every um hospital one by one and make sure that they know about this terrific okay okay now in terms of the communication it's it's imperative that we have more education with these groups in the communities. Yeah, um, one location tested 211 people and 62 of the people were positive, okay? So that's that's a huge 29% positivity rate. That is very, very large. So we have got to get into these uh, groups. My epi team was at the Guatemalan Center uh, on the last testing on the weekend, and that's what they did. They had one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks explaining to them they dropped off masks we're going to drop more masks for you father frank um and we have them to give out we, and we want to do a county-wide campaign on educating people and with that education is going to come compliance the sheriff has bought off on it and um other people have bought off i'm going to have one of my teams because the department of health regulates things like uh, tattoo parlors and things like that so we'll have one of my uh, environmental health persons on that team to regulate and to give some kind of reward to the places that are doing a good job like the restaurants that are behaving should mm -hmm. get a promotion or something saying that they're covid compliant and those that are not are going to have to be spoken to and know that if they don't comply they will get shut down okay that's good so dr alonzo th this is dennis doyle could i ask uh dr alonzo a question sure dennis dr. just, just you know, let dr alonzo does she, does she know you just identify your uh yes dr alonzo i'm a pro bono attorney for the guatemalan center and i have been in contact with your epi department and uh we have had a discussion about what the needs are in the community and the hotspots. I understand it that at this point, education and testing and contact tracing is what you're focused on. I have said to them, and they probably have passed along to you my letter talking about the fact that we have done enough testing and contact tracing and where we are is we need in-home healthcare. Before you came on, all of the representatives here talked specifically about how our population is not able to go to hotels, self-quarantine, they have to work, they have to stay in their homes. We at the Guatemalan Center, on a very rudimentary basis, have put together in-home healthcare units. We, are, we do not have physicians. We are simply individuals that are trying to do the best under very limited circumstances. When I have spoken to your people, they have written back that you do not have the funds to provide the type of in-home health care that we need for these people that have tested positive. Is that yes. true? It is not about funding. They used the wrong word. That's not our line of work. That is a great program that could be supported with the care dollars. 
And I think that is a uh, wonderful idea because I, we've always promoted home health for both the elderly as well as for people who are sick. So that would fit very nicely with the money from the CARES dollars that could be implemented for that type of a program, not only for uh, your area, but for the elderly and those who are homebound. Well, we've got the county commissioners on. They got $361 million out of the CARES Act, and I'm sure that Congressman Frankel was very instrumental in doing that, for which I thank her. But how do we get a hold of just a couple million dollars in our <laughs> county to take care of the people who are the most vulnerable and have to self-isolate? I don't know where the money is. How do yeah. we get it? Dennis, I'm going to let uh, Commissioner Weiss respond. I see he's taking copious notes, but I just can I just ask you a question, Dennis, so I we understand. What does home health care look like exactly? What is your definition of that? So well, we we, we've written we've, uh, all of those papers and all of our requests for personal protection equipment and in-home barriers have been delivered to the health department. But I will summarize them by saying to you, what, need, what we do, and I think is the only thing that can be done, is to go into the home, create a safe barrier for the sick person when he comes home to self-isolate. All other people in the house need to be masked, have sanitation. We put in UVA lights to scan the house to, t to kill the virus, wherever it is. We explain to them that once he uses the bathroom, if it's a he, that they cannot go in unless it's sanitized. So we have our own rudimentary protocols that I'm sure the health department could help us with, but we are only able to do so many people and we are not able to check on them medically to the extent that we should. We need what I'll call medical technicians that go in and do what I just described we do, but do it for all the populations that are represented here and do it. I mean, we, we, we can educate and test. What, what are we going to do? We're just going to surface thousands more people, and then we're not doing anything for them. We don't have anything in place to do anything for them. Okay, Dennis, let me have, thank you, Commissioner Weiss, for being on the call. Would you like to respond? Yeah, uh, so, and that's a great suggestion. I mean, we're looking for ways to utilize these dollars. Um, I, I wish there were 361 million, but there was 261 million, and we're still very appreciate. It's still a lot of money. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, but it, it is. Um, uh, this is in, and I'm going to ask Dr. Alonso: Is this something that you know, if we fund it, can you help us put this together, or we just need to partner with somebody? Because of course, the county doesn't have these kind of services. We need to find somebody to partner with. We can spend the money and make it happen. Um, absolutely. Can you still hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to help with this. Obviously, home care is not what the health department does. I want to remind people of that. But as a physician and as a knowledgeable person, um, basically what you need are a CNA level health auxiliary person that goes in and knows how to take a blood pressure. The, the issue that people with COVID are sent home to recuperate is because there's really nothing medically to do. It's all what I call education. In other words, it's isolating, using the mask, hygiene, and the right protocol for how to handle the area, how to um, clean with uh, regular Lysol type disinfectants. You don't, this, this is not fancy medical procedures. It's not like a person who's on an IV at home that you need a nurse. So the education can be done in multiple ways. West Palm Beach has a home visiting program with volunteer nurses. Um, we have a large number of nurses um, that have um, volunteer. We have a medical reserve corps that could be utilized for um, something like this. So I think the idea is um, a of being able to have people at home that would be able to do the things that a family would do, the things that families are doing now that are at home recuperating. And it's a short-term process because by the time the person's tested, 
they only have to isolate for the 14 days. So by the time they're tested, maybe it's another week. So it's not a okay. long term, long term. Right. Home kind of Do Dr. Alonso, just to follow on, and this is really for, for Mr. Weiss, he asked you the question, is this something you could do? You indicated you're really not set up to do in-home health care, and you gave the reasons for that. We need in-home health care. The county has the money, and if you are not in a position where you can take on that responsibility, can't the county find a way to go to us, Caridad, other people that are on the ground? I, I, I'm, okay, that, that is not to interrupt you, but I think you've made a very good point and the commissioner- I'll follow uh, up. I, he's gonna follow up. Uh, I think the object is to find someone who can do this. We don't have to necessarily put it on Dr. Alonzo's plate, but I think uh, Mr. Weiss has, has he's had, wants to, he wants to look into it. So he's gonna take the lead on this. Thank you, it's a great idea. I think there's something else uh, to add to this. But before you close me down, Congressman. We're not Congressman, you, before you close me down, <laughs> let me just say, there are people and organizations that can do what needs to be done. I will tell you that everything that has been done that I have described for our Guatemalan population, I have paid for personally. And Father, Father Frank will confirm that. More needs to be done. I can only beg and use my own money so much. The money is there, and, and I'm asking you to to and you and I know you will because you've done such a great job so far. See if you can't get the money into the hands of us, Caridad, on and on, and let us do the job that we're doing, but on a broader scale, mm -hmm. since we'd be well financed. Okay. Okay. I give. Thank you. You know what? I think the commissioner gets it, and he's going to. Uh, after this call, maybe not tonight, but he's going to look into it. He'll be in touch with you and others on the call and see what he can put together. Thank you for that. You know, I think another idea, I'm not sure if it's workable, but you know, uh, Commissioner, as, as, as we look at uh, trying to do the home health, if there was any way to get resources, financial resources, even for a, a week, to these folks so they didn't have to go back to work for a week would also be in, you know, and I would say uh, that's where maybe you can reach out to some of the nonprofits. Uh, you know, you know, we're going to, we're going to, not going to, we're going to save a lot of lives, a lot of medical expense. It's going to be worth the effort. And I would suggest that that is something to also to take a look at. Does, does anyone else want to, uh, Anyone have a suggestion? Anyone else want to make a comment before we close up? Okay, yes, Senator Berman, thank you. Senator Berman has become my partner in all these Zoom meetings. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you. Um, I, I think Commissioner Weiss, you, ha you are too. A lot of these mayors, I'm seeing your faces. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, can I mention that the uh, Children's Services Council made a reallocation of funds okay. that they had already committed elsewhere. They made a reallocation of those funds. And so we uh, give away Children's Services Council money up to a few hundred bucks at a time that they have made available. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Senator Burns. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, before you got on, Dr. Alonzo, some of the mayors um, talked and they said that they're getting information about zip codes but they're not getting specifically, and I know in our calls, you've talked about how you know, you look at things block by block. So if you can give the mayors where the hot spots are and talk to them and give them the blocks, I think that would be helpful because a lot of the people talked about the fact that they're only hearing a big zip code, 3460, which might have a few different cities. So if we can not give an indication of that, I think that would help them. Yes, six one is the one that I think covers three cities. Yeah, and, and the county. Dr. Lonzo, Dr. Lonzo, is that something that can be done? No, it cannot. No, no. no. not give out that information. Um, so no, we cannot give out that information. Period. 
Okay, well, let's discuss that. Because what they, what they were suggesting they'd be willing to do is uh, go to neighborhoods, hand out flyers. I mean, I guess they're not going to be knocking on doors. I mean, we're all social distancing. But to try to get, uh, is, is there, is there, I, I mean, you don't have to give us, give them the names of the home, the home people, but is there a way, uh, you know what, Mayor Triola, give it an example of, of what you mean about the different areas and how okay. it would help you, yeah. 33461 is part of, I think, Palm Springs, you have that, Mayor? I think you, uh, Palm Springs, um, that's 10th Avenue North, uh, west of 95, that's part of Lake Osborne, um, which is county. Um, so it's, it's, it's split up. So we're not quite sure exactly where to go. The other thing too, I just wanted to add with Father Frank saying those things before too, the Haitian community is another, has another whole educational source that we need to reach out to. Um, I went, I've been going to, we have the flyers in Creole, Spanish and, um, and English. And we're going and we're trying to drop into these communities and going out where people congregate outside. And I was talking with a group um, down by Domino Park. Miss Reggie knows exactly where that is. And uh, I was saying, you know, why are you guys not wearing masks and why, you know, and things of that. And they said, well, we don't have to worry about it because we drink this tea. And I said, what? We drink this tea. We got it from Africa and it's the cure for everything or whatever. And they were not concerned about it what one bit of whatever, and this was probably about, so I started saying, wow, this is a strange conversation. I thought it was a very limited conversation until I reached out in the community and spoke with probably a couple hundred people and they all thought the same thing. And I thought that's, that was scary to me, you know? And, and I don't think we had as big a showing at a recent, we did um, one at Lake Osborne. Reggie, how did that one go? Was there a good turnout for it? At the Osborne Center? Is Ms. Reggie still on the call? Yes, she is. Miss Reggie, would you, Miss Reggie, would you, uh, I, th I was going to come to you next. Can you unmute and tell us what's going on in the Haitian community? May I say hello? At the last event that we had, we had 15 Haitian tested families and the 15? rest of them were his, 15. The rest of them were pretty much uh, Hispanic and Afro-American. Okay. Uh, right. did you, I, I just don't see people coming out as much as in, in the community. Do you? Are you seeing it? Uh, but at at, uh, at the Peña Church, yeah, we had much more people there. Good. Okay. So you know what, uh, mayors, I think you're going to have to use educated guesses. It probably is won't be that difficult if you raise the family and figure it out. May, may, uh, I ask, may I ask something? I think what Mayor Trello asked will really help us as community organizer. If I know in the block of 12th Avenue to 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 um, to Asbourne, we have a hot spot there, then we can really, as a group, start pulling information together and start tagging those, those different communities. I think that's what the mayor want. And we want the same thing too. Because right yep. now we don't know where, where to start, where to go. Right, and we also, like I said, we're doing, now we have what, it's not just three tests in our neighborhood. We're doing like three and four tests every week in our neighborhood. Yeah, you know, exactly. Trying to get people to go to all these different ones. So yeah. you know, we have the ability to do it now. We've got a lot of help, so. How do we zero in and what do we do next, you know? I think so we need to this will help us. Can can I can yeah, I jump I, in? Yes, I, who is that? Joel? Yeah, Mayor Flores. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Mayor. If if Dr. Alonso is still on the line, I, I guess yes, I would like is. her her yeah. input. Um how um how are we communicating with with the Haitian community and, and the Hispanic community? What's what has been the messaging? Where have we put the messaging out? Is this, is this just web-based messaging, social media? Uh, how are we contacting those people that don't have any of those communication lines? Uh, if we can't go door to door, uh, we have to be, get really creative right now as to how we, we send this messaging out. I saw here in the comments that literature doesn't work. I know that the, uh, the, the van, uh, the bus has been going around is did primarily during the day which my concern is we, we are the workforce housing of the county. I've said this like three or four times already in this call. My people are out working eight to five, six or seven o'clock at night. So the time that they have to get tested is in the evenings yeah. um, after they come home tired from work. The people during the day, you have the community van coming to my community center tomorrow. The people that are going to go get tested during the day are the ones that are, don't have to go to work tomorrow. 
So what about those people that have to go to work? How are we going to educate them? How are we going to give them the literature, the information that they need if, if they're out working? Uh, we, we have sort of reopened the, the, the economy up again. Um, and how are we, are, are we shifting hours? Are we only doing this on the weekends? So what's, what's the communication? What should I be telling my community, Green Acres, and what should I be telling my Hispanic uh, uh, community at large? Wow. So uh, I'm going to go to you, Frank, in a second. I wanted to uh, just I, so I wanted to read some of the things, some of the comments being made because I think they're relevant. I, I don't know where Daniel Morgan, Daniel Morgan, I, you must be there somewhere. You're sending me uh, comments, but yes, uh, Congresswoman. Oh, there you are. And yeah, Daniel, who are you, Daniel? Hi, um, my name is Daniel Morgan, and I work as a case manager at the Guatemalan Maya Center. Okay, thank you. You know, Daniel has made some good comments. Uh, first of all, he wants to make sure that everybody knows that James Green is the director of community services. That's for the county. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And also, Daniel says that uh, there's a problem with the literacy rate in some of these communities, and that quote unquote, literature doesn't work, flyers don't work. Um, and then uh, Dr. Lonzo has said that there, there's a list by municipalities in addition to zip codes. And there, there are community health workers that will do what you're trying to do. And she wants to explain. Dr. Lonzo, let me let you explain and then we'll go to, Dr. to Father Frank. Okay, first of all, the most important thing, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. is that if you don't read and write, all these flyers and things that are being given out are worthless. They usually go in the trash. Uh, to me, flyers are to make people feel good, not to educate. So I agree with you guys 100% that that's not the way to do it. I have asked to make videos that are short and can be visual, uh, almost like a novella or like a quick cartoon like basically explaining the very basic things that we need to do this is not fancy for for COVID. this is a flu this is a virus so the things are social distancing which means six foot apart wear a mask stay home when you're sick and washing up your hands and hygiene okay that's very basic if we can get those very basic communications in a way that people can depict it on a uh, visual, then that will work. The other thing is audio. So what yeah. we have um, done, I have done um, messages in Spanish. Other yeah. people have done it in Creole. Yeah. Um, we have worked with radio stations. I have worked with Univision. I've asked uh, Father Frank that maybe we could do something at the Guatemalan Center and have it dubbed over in um, Mayan languages. So things that the people can really use and not necessarily anything in writing, that it be visual and audio. That's the way to communicate with the folks. The other thing, absolutely, after uh, on weekends and in the evening, we have a program set up through the human services program with, with, Dr., with Mr. Green as the director to create community health workers that will come from the community, picked out by the people in the community so that those people go into the community to provide all these um, promotional items as well as education visually and audio to the community itself, door to door. That's how epidemiology works. We have to go door to door. In terms of the zip codes, the zip codes are very big. So there's another list that appears on the, um, um, in, in one of the uh, things that goes out with the um, health department, with the Florida Health, that goes by municipalities. There's two lists. There's a zip code that shows up on the map, and then there's one by municipalities. So that narrows it down. If not, um, many of the people know where the hotspots are the community people that work in the communities know where these, these places are. And so we can utilize those community workers to do exactly what you all are trying to do. You, we need to get people from the people that are already doing this 
to be part of this group that we create so that we can do that outreach to the right places and we're not wasting resources just knocking on doors where people don't need to be. All right, thank, let me tell you, I'm gonna let uh, Father Frank make some comments and then I'm going to just sort of summarize what I've heard tonight and then we will we'll move on to our next step. Okay, Father um, Frank, this, yeah. This will be super brief. The, the, for the LEP communities, as everybody has commented, flyers are a waste of time. Mm -hmm. okay, just, but what Daniel Morgan has been doing for the last two months is he has a, a thousand phone numbers, right? And he speaks to the people in those homes in the language of the house. So if they speak mom or if they speak Kanhoval, right? And so on, they get these messages constantly. That, right. Information has not been the problem for the indigenous community. They, they have been flooded with it, in fact. They, it is the persuasion that comes with whether or not you have to go to work. And I, I just today, what I was trying to do was get lists of employers. They, they say the employers in the construction industry. Because last Saturday night, when we were looking at the workers, who, who were coming through the line, the big thing was their bosses had sent them. If, if, and that is where your information can be inf influential. If all of the bosses say nobody comes to work without testing, takes care of it. Got it. Gracias. Thank okay, you. so, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, you, you could, bosses can be strict and so forth, but you know, people are saying, am I going to starve? Am I going to, you know, am I going to starve? Am I going to be evicted? Am I not going to be able to pay my bill or whatever? I think that's, that's a real problem. All right. Listen, before we, is there anyone else that I, that I missed that wanted to say something? Otherwise I'm just going to try to sum up. Uh, Lois, Mayor yeah, Smith here. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what type of information goes to the people that test positive. If you test positive, especially in the neighborhoods we're talking about where you've got several generations or several families in one household, what are they told? I mean, would it not be helpful if they got a box of masks and cleaning equipment and instructions on what they need? I mean, what do these people get other than you're positive? Okay, uh, Dr. Alonzo, you want to respond to that? Contact tracers are the ones that talk to these people. And yes, we use NAM, we use Kanhabal, we use Chichi, what, what, whatever. We, we can get translations in many of the languages, Creole. Remember, we have 144 languages in Palm Beach County. It's not just these. Um, and we talk to them. We explain exactly what they need to have. And the idea is that along with our explanation of all these things that they need to do, exactly what you're saying that they need to have done in the home, in addition to that, we want to use the community health workers to go to that home and help them with the things that you're talking about. We okay, so that, Dr. Lanzo, the is that so of, the, of the 361 people that have tested positive in this 33461, have all of them been contacted or how quickly are they contacted? We're contacting them within two to three days. Um, we have done 74%. The goal usually in contact tracing is 80%. We'd like to be able to be at 100%. So we are, in addition to trying to contact them, if we don't contact them, we go back three times to try to reach them different ways. So, so far this, we're at 74%. So all right, this might be something that the county, if they could fund, to, I mean, these people don't have money to go out and buy masks and to right. buy you know, we're so bringing them okay. all the masks that they want. And all the cleaning. Want masks, we will bring you masks. Okay, so listen, okay. I, think, I think, let me let me sum up what, what, what we've heard today, because I think there have been a lot of good ideas. And I, I do think that, uh, you know, again, from where, where I've heard where there's been the best success in containing these virus is to put resources where the problem is. Put the resources where the problem is. Greg, this is an important point for all your, for the county commissioners. So let me just sum, sum up what I've, uh, from what I think I've heard from all of you today is 
we need to make sure that we're doing the right kind of communication. Uh, and I think that, so that's, that's an issue that definitely we should be taking a look at. Father Frank seems to think we're, uh, we're over communicating. Some of you think uh, we're, not, we're not communicating enough, but I think the most import, important thing is to make sure we're using the right kind of communication and the right tools so that we have heard that. Uh, you all want a more detailed uh, description of where the affections are. Uh, the health department has said you can at least get it by city. Uh, great idea today. I think that came from a bunch of you, including a, someone who I think is invisible. Oh yeah, Dennis, I don't see your face, but uh, something for Greg to take back to the commission, which is to use the CARES money to go into these homes where you have the infected uh, patient and try to put in place home health care and safeguards for that family. Uh, also taking a look at if there's any resources you can get to that family for at least a week to keep that person home. Uh, that, uh, Greg, I know you're gonna take a look at that, uh, but in terms of resources, Let's put that on the list of something that we have to also help him with. Um, great suggestion about let's, can we, can we do testing either before or after work? Is that something, uh, again, I see Greg shaking your head. You're going to take a look at that. Found care, Dr. Rick, now that we've made you a doctor today, is there, can found care do that? We are, so we've been testing. We started, in fact, today we started at 7 a.m. and we tested 170 people. Um, we, we wrapped up testing by about 11.30 for, so, but we started, we had people in line at 7 a.m. Okay. So the evening piece is one we will consider because the weather, it's very hot out right now. So doing evening testing might work better for our team um, as well. well. So it's something we'll look at. I think the county announced the use of your mobile uh, testing, or you call it scout, I think. And uh, Greg, maybe you can take a look and see if there's a way to do that after hours also. Four to eight's been very successful in Lake Worth Beach. Okay. Sat Saturday four to eight is huge because you've got people that don't work on Saturdays and then you've got the people and uh, you know that are working on Saturdays that get off by then and can be there by seven or eight o'clock, you know, right before eight o'clock. It's Those have probably been the more successful. Right. Uh, we talked about, in terms of the contact tracing, people knowing that when they are infected, that they are, there is paid supportive care. In other words, the county has, through the CARES money, uh, they can pay for somebody to self-isolate. And so, uh, we talked about the need to get that information out, and we're going to, uh, we will work, put that on the list, too, of getting it to the hospitals. Dr. Alonzo said the hospitals will get that information. But I do think it's important for anybody who touches a person who's infected to know, to be able to tell them and uh, connect them with this, this supportive um, quarantining. Okay, so that was on the list there. Uh, I, I, let me see what else we have. That was good. Uh, someone had the idea to see whether Children's Service Council has some resources that they could help connect with. So I think I think I have an overview. I think of what we've discussed today, and this is I think this has been very helpful. We're going to try to put some of these activities in motion. And why don't we uh, reconvene? You know, why don't we can reconvene in a week or ten days and and see whether or not we've put anything in place. Does anybody uh, feel compelled to take the lead on any of these initiatives other than I know we've just piled on <laughs> Commissioner Weiss. I know you have, you, have, uh, you have big shoulders there. Okay, well, we're all gonna work with you and I wanna thank everybody for taking time today and all of you who are doing so much work. And I, I gotta give a special shout out, of course, uh, to Dr. Alonzo, who just has had the whole, the burden of this entire County and I, we're gonna, we're applauding here. We're gonna hit use the chat to uh, not the chat. It's the reaction screen 
to do a thumbs up really for all the work that, that you have been doing, uh, Dr. Alonzo. We do appreciate that. And all the rest of you who are out there, uh, you are unsung heroes and heroines uh, doing this very difficult but necessary uh, work in the community. I want to thank you all and uh, we will we'll move forward with a lot of your ideas. Thank you very, very much, everybody. All right, good, stay good safe. Luck with, good luck with the stimulus. <laughs> yeah, to, the, to all our mayors, we're trying hard. We've got to get the, uh, call your senators. Tell them you need the money. <laughs> Congresswoman, thank you for all your great work. Okay. You're awesome. All right, thanks, everybody. Take care. Oh, anybody no. else? Any press questions? I think they're off, right, Morgan? No, there are no press questions. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.